And the response I got from my community after I did that video and that series, it was incredible. And it was just what I needed in that moment, in that season of life to encourage me and to motivate me to keep on this journey because I was in such a fog in that season of life. Yeah. And I I mean, as I mean, I've been through it too. It's a difficult, it's tough that postpartum, that fourth trimester. Yes. Yes. I, yeah, I know. Well, hello, YouTube Power Hour Squad. Erica here with a brand new interview for you. So this week I had the pleasure of chatting with YouTube and online influencer extraordinaire Cezanne Hendrick. Now, Cezanne has been in this on time influ- online influencer space for quite some time. She started off with a, a blog, transitioned onto YouTube, has a very successful Instagram account of over a million followers, and now also has a podcast with her husband. And in this interview, she talked a lot about how she's been able to evolve and change her content as she herself has changed as a person and how important that is in order to maintain the authenticity of your your content and your connection with your viewers. Welcome. My name is Erica Vieira. I am the host of the YouTube Power Hour podcast and a YouTube strategist, having worked with over 400 women behind the scenes since 2017, helping them grow their YouTube channels. And here on this channel, I'm coming in front of the scenes to share interviews with very successful YouTube female content creators where we pull back the curtain to reveal what it really takes to be successful on YouTube. So if that sounds like something that you would love, then subscribe, hit that notification bell so you don't miss any of the interviews I've got coming your way. And if you do end up liking this video, then hit that like button because it helps the algorithm. Enjoy the interview. Well, hello, Suzanne. Welcome to the podcast. Hi, I'm so happy to be here. Yes, I'm really excited to have you. And you are just such a wealth of knowledge when it comes to being an online influencer. So I'm excited to dive into that. Uh, But before we get into all the amazing things that you've done online, let's start with your YouTube channel. What inspired you to get onto YouTube? Oh my gosh, let's rewind to like what? Almost seven years ago when (laughs) I had a blog And this was around the time when everything was starting to come up to the surface, like blogs and social media. And I remember thinking, wow, I've had this blog now for a year. How can I expand? Like, how can I connect with this really intimate, small audience that I've built and actually like have conversations and create really fun content for them? And then I realized, wait, there's this platform called YouTube and there's people on there at the time. Like I was so inspired by Michelle Fan, who was doing incredible beauty content. And I looked at some of her stuff and I thought, hey, I could do this. I mean, I'm already blogging about it. Why not just get a small little camera, record it? I already know how to edit since that's kind of where my background is in radio, television, film. And I said, why not? Let's just give it a try. And I think when I made that sort of leap over to YouTube and it was definitely a journey because I had to learn how to talk to myself in a room to an imaginary audience. Mm -hmm. But the more that I did it, I really felt like I was starting to connect with the small community I had through my blog in a way more intimate way than me writing these diary posts, which you would think that would be a super intimate way to connect is when people are reading your words and, you know, you don't know where they could be reading your blog. It could be Mm -hmm. anywhere and everywhere, Mm -hmm. but there was something about when you are, when they're looking in your eyes, right? When you're really talking about something, it can see the passion. They can just see the obsession over a product or whatever. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And I just really loved it. I, I just felt challenged and I also felt really inspired. And so I kept going with it and YouTube has just obviously evolved so much since then for me in terms of the content I'm laying out on my channel, but it's been alive now for six plus years and it's been a great vehicle for my business and all the other areas in my business that I'm trying to grow, that I'm trying to bring my community into. YouTube has been the perfect sort of vehicle place to do that in a very intimate, engaged way. I love that. I want to dive into that. Uh, Before that, though, 
being a blogger, how did you find venturing into this YouTube space? Did you find immediate success? Were you able to bring that audience over to YouTube or did you kind of feel like in essence, you were just starting from scratch? A little bit of both, you know, it's, I never experienced that overnight success that I think we all dream about having when we dip into a new social platform. Like, oh my God, this video is going to go viral and it's going to like give me millions of followers. I never experienced that. It was always a marathon, not a sprint for me when it came to growing my audience and nurturing that audience on a day-to-day basis. I had to get creative. I had to think of ways on how can I can expand so that I could get my community from my blog to actually want to come to the YouTube. And so I quickly realized I could connect a lot of that blog content and just tie it into a YouTube video at the end of the post and be like, hey, if you actually want to see how to create this, you can mm-hmm. click this link here. And I started driving the traffic I did have. But I also love that YouTube at the time, it was just, it wasn't as... I guess, saturated. You know what I mean? It's become, I always tell my little brother, it's his generation's like Netflix. It's their television nowadays. It is. It is. All day, every day watching YouTube. Whereas, you know, six plus years ago, it really was this hub for informational how-to content. And it still is, but Mm -hmm. it wasn't as saturated with like entertainment and all of that. So I started building a community from the platform itself too, organically. And so I think it was a combination of it being the, I was in the right place at the right time, but I also was just very much on top of it. I was just very much hustling and grinding it out. And I knew that I had to be consistent early on if I wanted to get to the next level, you know, on the platform. Yeah. And so for you, you were already doing all this full time. So you're already kind of a full time influencer at that point. Right. So like I thought that's interesting when you said that you knew from the beginning of getting onto YouTube, you kind of went on it with the intention of going all in. Yes, because I had built my blog right from the bottom Mm -hmm. up. and I realized, Mm -hmm. man, the only way this really started to grow was because I was the one watering it every day like a plant. And if I even neglected it or decided to just like forget about it nobody else was going to update it. It was going to be right where I left off. So I just tried to stay very disciplined early on. And I think for me in the beginning, I really wasn't chasing numbers. Mm -hmm. I didn't even really know where this was all going to go because (laughs) brands at the time and partnerships and all those opportunities, they weren't really there yet. So Mm -hmm. I was just trying to chase the passion, the creativity, and just use these platforms for myself as an outlet while I was kind of figuring out like, what do I want to do with my life? Mm -hmm. And somewhere along the way, that idea, it became my life. I realized, wait, there is opportunity here and there is potential. But I showed up most days. I don't want to say every day, but most days I showed up like I had a million people watching me, even though when it was like 10 views, you know what I mean? Mm -hmm. You set that intention from the start. You, I guess you, you sort of discipline your mind to be trained in that way. And I look back at some of my old videos and I'm like, oh my God, I could sit here and do a YouTube video critiquing my old YouTube videos. Yeah. yeah. I look at that content and even though it's sometimes cringy to watch, I can also see how eager and excited I was because I wasn't so focused on the business Mm -hmm. aspect in the beginning. I wanted to see it as a business, I was just so excited that this is a real way to connect with tons of people at once all around the world. I thought it was incredible. And I just couldn't believe that like, this is happening in my time. You know, Mm -hmm. I was chasing television thinking, I want to tell people stories. I want to do broadcasting and entertainment news. I'm going out to LA. And then I realized, wait, I can actually be producing my own content. I could be my own editor. I could I could be my own talent instead of just reading a teleprompter, hoping and praying that I'm going to get a job with one of these entertainment, you know, networks. Yeah. Yeah. So I just, I was so fascinated by it all and just really excited in the beginning. Yeah. I mean, that's great. Was there a point with your YouTube channel? Did you feel that things were really taking off? Because obviously you, you, you did it for, you're doing it for years. So was there that initial tipping point where you're like, okay, this was a good decision? Yeah. You know, I think early on, it definitely took some time and, and just me 
building out my channel, putting content out there, but I wasn't super strategic. I noticed that like a lot of my how to videos, I was just keeping it very informational, like how to do a smoky eye. I mean, I've done a million of those now. <laughs> like, man, how can I recycle this over and over again? But at that time, I it was all so fresh. So I felt like the sky is the limit. Mm -hmm. And YouTube really became a safe place for people um, of, of all colors, especially minorities, to feel like mm -hmm. this is like our TV. I'd mm -hmm. be watching, you know, TV news and all those different entertainment shows where you would get inspired by like the red carpets and all of that. And I never saw a Middle Eastern woman mm -hmm. on these networks, on these mm -hmm. channels, on these shows. And YouTube gave that opportunity to me, obviously, as a Middle Eastern American to produce mm -hmm. and create that content. But in return, there's this huge community now of girls who also look like me who are like, what? That's how you, you color correct under your eyes? I didn't know that. Yeah. And so it was just naturally the views were going up and my content was so easy to create because I just kept it super relatable, you know? the problems that I was experiencing in my routine, I wanted to just create something where I could share that openly with other women and it stuck. And so YouTube really became that place where I could be vulnerably myself. I could be completely authentic and I could create the content that I wish I was seeing in the world, mm -hmm. which at that time you weren't seeing a lot of that stuff. And I like to keep it natural, you know, and practical. I've always been that natural beauty kind of girl because mm -hmm. I'm not a makeup expert. And I think YouTube gave me that opportunity to spread my wings and fly. And then it gave me the confidence to say, well, there's so many other areas of my life that I have yet to share with this awesome growing community now. And the, the more that I connected with my audience, the more that they wanted to know other things beyond beauty, like they wanted to feel inspired and it it didn't have to stop at beauty. And for the longest time, I thought that it did. I thought, well, if I'm on YouTube, it just has to be fashion and beauty. And then if I'm on this platform, it has to be this, this, this. I was limiting myself. Mm. And I think when you start to build an audience across different platforms, you think that the content that you put out, it has to be like so different for each and every single one. But what you forget is that every single audience member on each platform is unique and different to that platform. So I could talk about how to do a smoky eye on my blog and do that same thing in video format for my channel and not feel like I'm just, uh, you know, uh, what are they redundant. Talking? Yeah. Yes, I'm just being redundant. No, it was actually like, it made me realize, wait, I can actually connect the dots where I need to and not overwork myself because I'm one person. And I kind of got smart about that in that way. And then lifestyle too, you know, Instagram and, and my blog, I started talking about more like my marriage and and I got pregnant and became a mom. And so I was starting to do series on my channel where I was still trickling in the, the passion that I love, which is makeup. But it was now incorporated into my lifestyle. It's like real mommy makeup. Mm -hmm. Like, let's be real. Like, mm -hmm. this is what I'm actually doing three months postpartum. And it ain't no smoky eye, you know? And so <laughs> I love that YouTube has been that hub for me where even though, oh, even though as I'm evolving as a mom, as a businesswoman, just as a person. I love that. Like my channel can evolve and grow with me. And it doesn't, mm -hmm. I don't have to try to stay in one specific category or one specific time frame of my life. Like I'm not 22 anymore, you mm -hmm. know? And I love that that audience on YouTube, they're so down to like grow with you and engage with you and evolve with you. And so it's really, that platform is very unique in that way for me because I can expand and grow and I have that permission to mm -hmm. evolve and grow in my content. Yeah, that's, that's really great. I mean, you said so many incredible things. I mean, that's why I, I love about YouTube. You're right. Cause it's like, it's become a platform for anybody, anybody of all backgrounds and walks and experiences and, you know, all over the world to be able to have a platform where before, like you mentioned, you'd have to move to LA or New York to, to pray and hope somebody hires you for one of their networks or shows. Yep. That's right. And that was yeah. me yeah. praying and hoping somebody was going to hire me and my bank account was getting real low. Yeah. Uh Oh, I might be going back to Texas if I don't figure this thing out. And then I realized, man, we have so many resources in front of us in the now that we could be really maximizing our potential with. 
and you don't have to have it all to start that channel for yourself. You know, it starts with a passion and an idea, but sometimes people think, well, I need to invest in like a $5,000 camera before I can start my channel. I have to have an editor edit my videos because I can't do it. Nowadays, there are so many resources right in front of us at literally dirt cheap. Mm -hmm. We can teach ourselves how to edit. Hello, Mm -hmm. iMovie. It's like editing for dummies. Mm -hmm. Um, But YouTube also is a platform where I've seen, I've hired, I've hired videographers. I've hired editors to help Mm -hmm. me over the years. And you know what performs the best? When it's just me in my room with some great lighting and my iPhone. And it's like so great that that's the YouTube world. They're not looking for perfection. They are just looking for authenticity and engaging content. I love that. So true. They're not looking for perfection because there's been perfections for so long that I think that's why people came to YouTube because they want to, they want to see real, real life. So for you, how has your YouTube channel evolved? I mean, you kind of touched on that in the sense that, you know, you started off really doing beauty and fashion as, I don't, I don't know if you were single or not, but like you didn't, you, you didn't yeah. have kids at the time. Okay. Single woman. Yeah. And then you progress and you met your husband and you got married. Now you have kids. So, or a child, um, how has that progressed your YouTube channel progressed along with that? You know, I remember like the turning point for me, you know, what it was, it? it was three months. I was probably, probably three months postpartum Mm -hmm. with my daughter, first time mom. And I remember thinking, all right, it's time to get back in the saddle, Mm Saz. It's time to get back on your content game. But to be completely honest with you, my heart and my head was just not there. It's like, I remember the day I went back into my filming room after having a baby and I was still very much in my fourth trimester, I call it, Mm because after you have a kid, it doesn't just end there. I still was dealing with a lot of the emotions. I had a little bit of the postpartum blues, but I just felt like you've got to get back on the set. You need to do this. And I remember going into my YouTube room and I had started doing a tutorial, which was so not me. I mean, it was like, I wasn't actually doing that kind of makeup in that season. Yeah. So it wasn't authentic. I started doing this glittery like look and halfway through, I was just like, what am I doing? I literally got up. I walked out of the room and I remember walking into the kitchen and I was crying to my husband who also works with me. So he's been there every step of the way. He's like, what's going on? And I was like, Stevie, I just, I don't know what's happening. Like all these years that I've poured into my channel, into all of this suddenly I just don't want to do anything anymore. And he's like, well, that's not true. You don't want to do that glittery smoky eye Mm. right now anymore. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And he told me, he said, why don't you do a video on your channel where yes, makeup, it's part of what you do and, and who you are. It's the gimmick. And why don't you just talk to women who are following you? Just have conversation. He was like, you can call it something like makeup and motivate. And I was like, oh, suddenly there was like that light in my eyes. Mm-hmm. And I thought, Wait, that's a great idea. I said, let me think about that. And literally within 15 minutes, I'm like wiping my tears off. I go back into my YouTube room and suddenly my heart was on fire to do this series. And I needed to just have that meltdown, but I didn't want to unpack it and live there. I needed to get up refocus and keep going where I was heading. And at that time I knew I wanted to keep growing. I wanted to keep nurturing my audience, but I didn't want to give up because I don't want to do a glittery smoky eye. (laughs) So that's where makeup and motivate started on YouTube. And it changed everything for me because when I did that first video, it's called just be you. Mm -hmm. It was like, I was doing the makeup, but it wasn't so much like, all right, guys, first step, blah, blah, blah. It was just, Hey guys, I'm going to be doing my makeup, but while I'm getting ready, I'm just going to be talking to you guys about some things I've been going through. And I remember in this video, just vulnerably having that breakdown moment in front of the camera with my audience, telling them that this was hard. I'm in a really hard season right now. And then I just suddenly felt really inspired to motivate anybody out there who's watching, feeling the same thing. And the response I got from my community after I did that video and that series, it was incredible. And it was just what I needed in that 
moment, in that season of life to encourage me and to motivate me to keep on this journey. Mm -hmm. And when the going gets tough, not necessarily quitting, but maybe changing, a, changing the focus a little bit, you know, mm -hmm. transforming my content a little bit so that it is true to my heart. And even in that video, just be you, I ended up having a red lip. Was that still practical in that season of life? No. Mm -hmm. But what was real was the fact that I was just talking to them and it, makeup was just part of it. It was a gimmick. And I, I just, I loved that I did that. My husband inspired me. It ended up, we continued doing that series for a little bit. And so many women just really came out and a com that community just started to grow even more. Suddenly now mm. I have a mommy community. And so the rest is history because after that, I realized I'm never going to put something on my channel just because I feel like I got to get back in the saddle and I need to put up a post this week. Mm -hmm. I was like, I'm never going to do that again, not to myself and not to this community who takes the time to click those links in our bios, to come over to your channel and to watch your stuff. It's got to be true. It's got to be something I'm passionate about because let's face it, I spent a lot of time editing and I spent a lot of time in post-production. So it's got to be something I'm excited about and something that they can be excited about too. I love that. And it's so true. I like that lesson of because as a, especially somebody like you that's been in the game for a while, you are going to change as a person. And so maybe that person who you were when you first started your blog and your channel is not the same person that you are today, the mother, the wife, and now you know full-time influencer. And so it, like you said earlier, it, YouTube is about an authenticity and for you to now come back trying to pretend that you're that person you were before just wasn't authentic to you. And so you could, you could give up and be like, I'm done. I'm done with YouTube. I don't want to be in the public eye. I, you know, I have my daughter, I'm over it. But then, you know, you have a great supportive husband and he said, you know, snapped you out of it and said, well, you don't have to do that route of the smoky eye. Yeah. You could just do what you've been doing, which is being authentic, which might look different today. Yeah. Wow. And shout out to all of the, I, 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 you know, I call them our, our guides, right? Mm -hmm. if you're a YouTube creator. Then, you know, like we have those core people in our mm -hmm. life, whether it's our significant other or our friends or our family who, uh, who inspire us, but sort of keep us on the path, right? Mm -hmm. They believe in us. And sometimes they see, they see incredible things in us in those moments when we don't see it. And so I think a lot of the times we don't give enough credit to those people who are our guides along the way who remind us why we got in this thing in the first place, you know? Yeah. And for me, like I said, it was never about chasing numbers. So I had to kind of go back to that core value of you started doing YouTube because you wanted to connect with people and you wanted to inspire them. So I needed to get back to that. And in that moment, my husband helped me get back there. And it was such a blessing because I was in such a fog in that season of life. Yeah. And I, I mean, as I mean, I've been through it too. It's a difficult, it's tough that postpartum, that fourth trimester. Yes. yes. Uh, yeah, I know. So at that point, how long ago was that when you uploaded the makeup? Was it makeup motivation? Had makeup and motivate. It makeup. was. So my daughter's two and a half now. So it was three months after she was born. So yeah, over two years ago, I did that. So then how has the trajectory of your YouTube channel changed? Have you seen actually faster growth since you started doing that or the same consistent growth or what happened after that point? I did. I started seeing a lot more higher views and in mm -hmm. like engagement and I started seeing my subscribers were going up and it wasn't like anything crazy, but the subscribers were going up like a thousand subscribers every new video I was posting. And so for me too, that's when I was like, all right, I love that I kind of now know what I want to do on my channel. Mm -hmm. And it's only taken me like how many years? But now that I know, I actually need to be more honed in too on the analytics side. Mm. That's when I started working closely with like a YouTube account person. Mm -hmm. And they started helping me figure out like how to go in the back end and just look at some of those key words and things that I was using in my posts and on my videos. Mm -hmm. And then, you know, another beautiful thing about YouTube versus Instagram and some of those other platforms like TikTok is that YouTube is very SEO friendly. You mm -hmm. know, when people are on Google and they're searching, you know, motivation for moms, you never know. Your video could very well 
pop up because people like seeing videos and images when they're searching. And so I love that the platform has expanded its ability for creators to get into the back end and just work smarter, right? And that's been really great since that all has come about mm. um, for me. And I'm still diving into the back end because I just love seeing like, whoa, at what moment in my video did people drop off? And I'm like, oh God, there, there I was going off on a tangent about the mailman. Why did yeah. I do that? <laughs> I, I like having that as a resource. That feedback, yeah. Yes, as to help you along the way. So all of that together has really helped grow my channel. But again, it's a very competitive space that we're in now, not to mm -hmm. discourage any new creators, because I think you can still do it, especially with all the resources out today versus six years ago. Mm -hmm. But it's not necessarily about growing, just growing the numbers in your audience, but it's about engaging the community that you already have. Mm -hmm. And that is now my priority with my content is like, the people who are following me, that's a blessing. How can I cater to this community? How can I get to know the audience I already have? Mm -hmm. Because there's so much about them I have yet to uncover. The more I get to know them, the more I'm going to be able to continue creating products and services for them and content for them on my channel. So all of that has just been really helpful seeing the back end and what my audience is loving. And then also seeing like, whoa, this percentage of people is coming from Google search engine. Like mm -hmm. that's cool too, to get new eyes. But my focus is just wanting to engage the community that I already have. That you already have. Yeah. So that was my question. So what is it that you're now looking at in your analytics that maybe you weren't before that's actually made a difference with the growth or that engagement on your channel? For me, it's like, I love looking at the audience retention, mm -hmm. like seeing, okay, this is the percentage of people that are really engaged in this type of video. Cause I do all kinds of videos. That's the thing. I'm not just a beauty person mm -hmm. because I do lifestyle because I dip into hair because I do beauty. I kind of do it all. I have to kind of keep track that I'm not spreading myself too thin by doing too much. Like you just need to still be pretty niche with mm -hmm. more broad content. Mm -hmm. If that makes sense. So for me, it's like, if I'm going to do a lifestyle video it still needs to feel like how maybe it would feel for a beauty video and comparing the analytics or sometimes just changing up the content to see how they respond. So I love looking at audience retention. I also love seeing the percentage of people that are coming from like the tags mm -hmm. and words because I really do treat my description at like a blog post on my channel. Mm -hmm. And mm -hmm. so I'm not that person that's just like, enjoy this video. Don't forget to subscribe in the description. I'm that girl that's like, Hey guys, thanks for coming back to my channel. I treat it like a blog post. Mm -hmm. And then a lot of the times I'll copy and paste some of that and actually put it into a blog. Your blog. On. Mm -hmm. And I think it's important to treat our YouTube videos like that. It's like a 360. You got to see it from all aspects from when you're doing the video, making sure you have an intro, middle ending, keeping it really concise. But then once you upload it to the platform, it doesn't end there. You don't just post the video and hope for the best. There are actual practices and things you can do, like looking at your backend analytics, mm -hmm. what do people engage with, and getting creative with some of your titles and searching for those SEO-friendly tools. Something else that my YouTube, um, one of the YouTube, I've had a couple different ones, but one thing I learned from YouTube, probably a workshop, was that there's a really great resource called trends.google.com. Yeah, you can yeah. get on there. And you can, you know, when you feel like you're in a content rut, you can go on there and search, like, what are people really searching right now on the web around the world? Mm -hmm. And I really kind of get, can, I get pretty specific with my Granule. search. Right yeah. Now. It's like beauty and more lifestyle. So I type in makeup, you know, or makeup tutorial. And when I define, I, I kind of define my search by like the U.S. or what are people searching on YouTube specifically only? Mm -hmm. I can suddenly see like, whoa, these are the trending videos right now on YouTube. And then I see some of that sometimes and I'm like, well, that's kind of fun. I want to do that, but let me bring my own unique twist to it, you know, and do it my way. So that always helps me when I'm in a content rut because I mean, when you're creating content every week, you will get, you will run out of ideas. I'm six plus years in it now. Yes. And I'm like, 
I can't just do another everyday makeup tutorial. Yeah. I keep it fun and entertaining. And so I love using Google Trends, Pinterest, and also just listening to my audience and seeing like, hey guys, here's a poll. What do y'all want to see on my YouTube channel this week? And then you get that mm -hmm. kind of instant feedback. That's been really great too. Um, and it's just all part of the process of communicating with your audience and engaging with them. Yeah, that's great. When uh, has our... Has there been a time where you've taken that approach of like, oh, looked at Google Trends and then put your own twist? Do you have any videos or examples of that? Um, I'm trying to think. Well, <laughs> there's been a couple. Like husband, <laughs> I thought it would be funny to do this. And I kind of regret doing this video because it's like the top video now on my channel. And it's oh, kind, really? of, kind of toink with your analytics a little bit. It's husband tries my breast milk. Like oh. I, I pumped it. And I had a little shot glass and I did not think he was going to do it. And I wanted to just do something like that for fun. Well, it ended up getting so many millions of views. And now it's like that top video on my channel. And I'm like, well, I, kind of, I didn't post that because now it's kind of messing with my analytics in the yeah. a little bit. But one thing that I did was I had searched makeup. Mm -hmm. And I had noticed that a lot of the things that people wanted at that time was beginner. And I thought, wait, if that's one thing I can do, it's like the basic steps. Mm. And I hadn't done that on my channel yet. So I did a beginner's makeup guide and I added the twist of sharing tips that I have learned from professional makeup artists, from mm -hmm. doing shoots and being in LA and adding some like tips from Laura Mercier when she taught me how to do an actual like how to lift up your eyes by putting the liner in the upper water line and not bawling your eyes out in the process and showing how to lift and awaken your eyes. It just got so many great views. So I think combining that, my own unique twist with what was already trending, something great was born, right? And, and mm -hmm. it, something cool was created for my audience, but also for the internet space who was searching for beginner's makeup. Yeah, that's awesome. You're leveraging all the different aspects to get your channel to grow. So nice. we are nearing the end of the interview. I know that went quick. So at this point, we do what's called the hot seat round. And so I just ask you a series of questions that I ask everyone that comes on the show and you just answer them as, you know, first things that come to your mind. Okay. So what is a favorite video you have done on your channel? Uh, my favorite video that I have done on my channel is probably like, six months of Valentina, which was the first six months of my daughter's life. I documented mm. it and then I ended up editing it into a really cute montage video. Oh, that's and cute. I look back at that video now and I'm like, wow, I'm so glad I did that because that's my baby. What? I so know. Growing up. And so I love videos like that on my channel where it's now become a keepsake and it's like yeah. a virtual scrapbook. I'm seeing my daughter, like what she looked like. So I just love, I'm giddy for those kinds of videos. Oh, that's a special, that's a very special video. Um, what is the, you might've answered it already. What is the highest viewed video on your channel? Let me see. I can look it up or do you know it? I'm, unless it's been surpassed by another video, I'm pretty sure it's husband tries my breast milk. <laughs> <laughs> That's so funny. Yep. Two years ago, it's got 3.3 million views. Oh my God. Like, I, you know, we're expecting a second child in November now. And I'm like, I don't think oh, we're, congratulations. Doing we're doing a part two to that. Okay. And he was like, are you sure you don't want to? I mean, it was the highest rate of it. I'm like, Steve, no, no, I really want to try my breast milk again, which, oh, I can't get through that. That's so <laughs> funny. Well, it's got you 3 million views. 3 million people sat through it. Um, that's funny. Okay. Next question is... Uh, any video you were particularly excited about that didn't do so well on your channel? Oh, gosh, where do I start? I feel like, you know, I, I probably every month bump into that kind of stuff, yeah. you know? Um, I don't want to say a specific video. Um, maybe one that I did, it was another beginner's makeup. And I was like, I'm going to do another beginner's makeup video and it's going to be just as great as the first one. And it wasn't as great as the first one. And I was just like, what? I thought my beginner's makeup video was where it's at. Yeah. And so I just felt discouraged a little bit. And I was like, this was actually better than the first one and it got less views. But I think as creators, we can all agree that like sometimes you put more heart into a, a video mm -hmm. and you don't see it perform as well and you blame yourself, but it's, it's so many other factors sometimes, not just the content, right? Yeah. So. Yeah. Yeah. But it happens to everybody. Exactly. Um, 
What is the biggest opportunity you've received as a result of your YouTube channel? Um, let's see. So when I did my makeup and motivate series, mm -hmm. um, I actually had an opportunity like Harper Collins ended up emailing me oh. and this was two years ago and long story short, um, I've sort of delayed that process a little bit and I've gone into a couple of different routes with what I'm going to do with that. But they came to me and said, Hey, we saw your makeup and motivate video and we'd already been following you for years. It was a specific girl that worked at the publishing company. And she was like, we, she said that video. I just said, after watching it, that's it. I have to reach out. It was almost like she had been contemplating for a while, like, okay, mm. I'm keeping an eye on this girl. And then when I launched that Makeup and Motivate series, it was like, it was a no brainer for her at that point. She was, that's mm -hmm. it, I'm doing it, I'm emailing her. And so the opportunity obviously came about to write a book and oh, wow. to go through that process, which I began to, but I also felt like I was being called into a different direction. And so I put it on pause and I, it's like, you know, the book writing process, it is such a process. But I thought that was really amazing. I was like, a publishing company reached out to me directly because of a YouTube video that I did. Wow. And so many other opportunities that have been really cool, like collaborations, getting to do my own lipstick with Bobby Brown. Mm -hmm. You know, they told me that they were such a fan of my content on YouTube because I was doing everyday, more natural style makeup versus what a lot of some of the gurus were putting out there was like full face glam and nothing went wrong with that. But I yeah. just know how to do that. Like, that's not my thing. And so they really loved that. And then I ended up getting to do my own nude lipstick color. And so got to do a lot of content on YouTube when that launched. Mm. And so a lot of little things like that too, along the way. And um, it's all because of my channel. So it's so yeah. great. That's exciting. So many, so many awesome things. Um, what do you think is your superpower, your unique superpower that has led to your success? Mm, my superpower. I think for me, it's just always been just my transparency. I think with my audience, with anybody really, whether it's somebody at the grocery store or one of my followers, it's like, I never have allowed this whole journey get to my head in any way. Mm -hmm. um, I've never allowed myself to feel like, oh, you made it. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. And I've just always stayed true to being completely transparent in whatever season of life I'm in, I'm always just super honest and transparent about what I'm going through. And then I somehow mix the content into what I'm going through versus the other way around. Mm -hmm. you know, and I've gone through those periods where it's like, I used to go get ready for the day because I was like, I need to go shoot content. Like, let's go do something fun so I can shoot content. Mm. But that all switched when I became a mom. It flipped. Yeah. It's like, I'm going to go have fun. And if there's a moment or an opportunity where I want to share it, then I'll do that. And so I've just learned to be super transparent about my content and, and just be real with my audience. Mm -hmm. And I think it's been probably the best thing for me as a content creator. The more real you can be really, the better and the easier it is for you and less pressure to try to be something that you're not. Yeah. Can you imagine trying to sustain a channel or a career if it's not who you are? No. And I see so many great channels. I'm like, oh my God, that is, whoa, the edits that they did are these crazy fun videos, these adventure things. Mm -hmm. And it's so great, but I'm like, yeah, that's not me, you know, yeah. and that's okay. And so I think we just have to stay true to who we are and what we know and what we feel passionate about and let it just pour out into what mm -hmm. you end up doing in life. Mm -hmm. I love that. So I wanted to give you a chance because I know you have a podcast with your husband and that's something new that you've been doing. So I want to give you a chance to kind of chat a little bit about that and tell people about this podcast that it sounds like it's kind of the next step in your online influencer career. Yeah. Podcasting, man. I feel like, you know, when we started it two years ago, mm -hmm. influencers were not even thinking right to jump onto that space, but we had been kind of thinking about it for a while and I just love the podcast space because it's probably the most intimate space in terms of being able to talk for long periods of time and really, mm -hmm. di you know, un dissect stories and things on your heart. And so my husband and I wanted to do something together because along this journey with YouTube and blogging, Stevie has been with me every step of the way. And our community just 
loves seeing us together. They're so inspired by our marriage and just, just us as a couple, I guess, who's doing business together. And so I think the podcast was the perfect opportunity for us to bring something new to life, something we were both really excited about. And it's called The Good Life with Stevie and Cezanne. And, you know, every week we are talking to guests, but we are also doing it together. And we're figuring out, like, what does it mean to live a good life, you know, across all aspects of life, whether it's business, health, family, God, you know, we Mm -hmm. talk about it all. And it's been a really great platform for us that we never in a million years thought would grow into what it is today. We're almost at 13 million downloads, which is insane. And we're continuing to now expand that part of our business for that community. It's a whole new environment, a whole new world. And we want to keep creating services and products to mentor to that community, which Mm -hmm. just like our most, I don't want to say most engaged, but they're really sitting through and listening to these hour episodes with you Mm -hmm. and they care. And so that's where we're at now. And we're just so excited that the podcast allows us to do that once a week. So every Wednesday you can check it out. It's on Apple podcast, Spotify, you know, where you receive, wherever you receive your podcast really. Um, And it's called the good life with Stevie and Suzanne. So if you want more inspo, you can check that out. Yeah. We'll definitely link it in the description below. I mean, it's so cool. Suzanne, how you've just taken, you've really evolved with like online platforms, you know, you started off as a blogger and then a YouTuber and then parlayed that into, you know, podcasting and businesses. And so I think that's really amazing. And I think you're definitely a, an incredible example for women in general that to just show what's, what's possible. And so thank you so much for being here on the podcast and for sharing your story. And for anybody who's not familiar with you and your channel, I, mean, I know you talked about the good life, but where, where, where's the best place for them to connect with you and find you? Thank you for all those sweet. Thank you for all those sweet words. You're so kind. Um, you can just, I always say, just Google my name. Is that so bad? <laughs> just was on S A Z A N. I don't think mm-hmm. there's anybody else out there with that yeah. name. It might autocorrect to Satan though. So be here. I cannot tell you the amount of times my mom is like, Hey, Satan, how was your day today? I'm like, Mom. So it's on S A Z A N. Yeah. And you'll obviously see my channel pop up and my blog, our podcast, all of that. And so I'd love to connect with anybody here who's coming from here to there. Just send me a message or let me yeah. know. I always, I always think it's so fun to see where people came from to discover like your page and stuff. So yeah, I know. Yeah. And if you guys here watching it on YouTube, comment below, like did Suzanne inspire you at all? I think she had so many incredibly inspirational stories and insights. Um, and so how are you inspired? How are maybe you changing your YouTube channel or maybe considering doing something else, starting a podcast, a blog, comment below, let us know. And Suzanne, thank you. Thank you so much. This was awesome. Thank you. You're so great. Thanks for having me on this awesome show. Bye. Bye. Bye.